What's good, big dogs? It's your boy, Andrew. If you guys have never seen me before, that means you just haven't watched the last couple videos. So go make sure you watch those videos. There's more context of who I am, why I'm here. But if this is your first time seeing me, you can find me on X at Andrew Too True, or you can find my content on YouTube at The League FFB. But I'm here for BDGE, helping out with the Dynasty Fantasy Football content for the foreseeable future. So get used to seeing my face on this channel. I'm here to help you guys with your Dynasty Fantasy Football teams, and I'm really excited about it. So with that being said, if you guys are not subscribed to the Dynasty channel, make sure you go subscribe to that channel. After the first month of content, we are no longer going to be posting Dynasty videos over here on the normal channel. So make sure you're subscribed to the Dynasty channel if you want to make sure you're catching that content. But what we're here for today is we're going to be talking about my favorite and the best players that you should be picking in your Dynasty Fantasy Football startup drafts this offseason. So I want to go through a couple of these rounds with you. I want to talk about those players, why I like them and why you should be drafting them. So without wasting any more time, why don't we just hop right into this video and let's talk about these players. So we got some Dynasty Startup ADP here provided by South Harmon Fantasy Football. So you guys see it on the screen here. These are the picks that we are going to be working with. And this is kind of what you should be expecting to see as you enter these startup drafts here this offseason. But we're going to be starting in the first round. And the first player that I really like in this round is going to be Jamar Chase. I think he's the best value pick in this round. And it's funny because we talk about the first round. We're talking about best and favorite picks. It's hard to pick a favorite here. All of these players are really good fantasy football players and really if you're going to pick any of these players you're going to be happy with them on your team likely they're all going to be good for fantasy football but the reason why I'm selecting Jamar Chase is because I think he's the best value where he's being drafted you see him coming off the board here at the 110 and when you really sit there and think about what Jamar Chase has been you see he's in this S tier we talk about those S tier wide receivers of Justin Jefferson Jamar Chase CD Lamb that's kind of the picks that you're going to be making here but we're just going to get Jamar Chase here at the best value he's coming off the board as the third of those wide receivers so I'll take any of them. All of these quarterbacks have come off the board first. And rather than reach for one of these other quarterbacks in a lesser tier, I'm just going to take that S tier wide receiver in Jamar Chase. And we know that a massive contract extension is going to be around the corner for Jamar Chase. He's going to get tied to Joe Burrow for the foreseeable future. You have wide receivers on his own team like T Higgins, Tyler Boyd, these guys are going to be free agents here in 2024, so there could be a little bit of a roster shuffle at the wide receiver position for the Cincinnati Bengals, and the only thing that this tells me is if one of them moves on or even both of them move on, which I don't know if that's a likely case scenario, but if one of them moves on, I think we can see just a little bit of an increase in target share for Jamar Chase, and if we give him a little bit more of a target share, it's crazy to think about what he could do because he's been so good for fantasy football for us so far up to this point. He's a big play waiting to happen. And like I said, we don't really got to beat it into the bush. All of these guys are good players, but I'm going to take Jamar Chase as the best pick because you're going to be able to get that early second if you land in this spot and you take a player like this that can compete with Justin Jefferson, can compete with a guy like CeeDee Lamb. And that's why I like him here at the 110. Now moving on over to the second round, my favorite pick in this round is actually going to be Kyler Murray coming off the board here at the 212. And I'm actually higher on Kyler Murray than the consensus right now. You see he's being drafted coming off the board as the QB 11, maybe even the QB 12 when you account for the rookie picks here, but I currently have Kyler Murray as my QB 9. And obviously we've seen Kyler Murray trending up over the last couple of months, but he did see a significant dip in 2023. Obviously that's because he tore the ACL in 2022, and that obviously forced him to miss some games here during the 2023 season. Now obviously Kyler Murray's stock had trended down in 2022 because he tore the ACL, and then in 2023 he missed some games, so we did did have a dip in Kyler Murray's value, but I don't think it has bounced back all the way up to where it should be because when we look at Kyler Murray's career fantasy points per game before the ACL tear, he was averaging 20.3 fantasy points per game. And even before the ACL tear, he had only missed three games in his career that forced him to miss time. This is a player who has been healthy for the majority of his career, despite the narrative that people spin. And to give you an idea of how good that is at that 20.3 fantasy points per game, only three quarterbacks who played in more than eight games in 2023, averaged more fantasy points per game than that. And those quarterbacks were Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and Lamar Jackson. And think of how highly we were valuing them for our fantasy football teams this year. And then to go back to 2022, there was only four quarterbacks who averaged more fantasy points per game than that. Those being Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Jalen Hurts. So Kyler Murray, when he's healthy, he's averaging the fantasy points per game that we want to see out of an elite quarterback. So all in all, Kyler Murray's been a great fantasy football 
asset despite the Call of Duty stuff, despite all the other BS that you hear these people want to spew on Kyler Murray's name. He's been very good for fantasy football. And in fact, he has been elite for fantasy football when we look at the numbers. And you have to account for what this Arizona Cardinals team has the opportunity to do here this offseason. This is a team that has the number four overall pick. They're going to be in the sweepstakes for Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe even a Malik Neighbors. And you got to think that they have some free agent cap space that they can go in. They can add a wide receiver in the offseason, even if it isn't in the NFL draft. So this is a team that can improve around Kyler Murray. And even when you look at the improvements that they could make, you still got to consider that Kyler Murray, when healthy, using his rushing upside, using his passing abilities, he's been a guy who's been elite for fantasy football. And I just think this is a guy whose value could increase as we go through the offseason. I think he could slide up there into that mid-second round, maybe even the early second round round depending on who they add this offseason and I think he's just a great pick here in the second round of your startup drafts but let's move on to this third round the player that I like the most in the third round is actually going to be Jonathan Taylor coming off the board at the 309 and when we look at wins above replacement this is a stat that shows us that having an elite RB is super beneficial to your fantasy football rosters but you need to have a running back that could at least finish in the top five that is what you're looking for when you want to add one of these elite running backs and that's what I think Jonathan Taylor is. But the reason why I like Jonathan Taylor here in the third round is because he is the most affordable of those elite backs. When I look at these blue chip running backs for my dynasty fantasy football teams, the guys that I feel like I know are elite running backs for fantasy football, those are going to be the CMCs, the B. John Robinsons, Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, I think Jonathan Taylor falls in that same category, in that same S tier as those blue chip running backs, but we're getting Jonathan Taylor a whole round later than the rest of those guys. All of those guys are going to be going in the second round. You're going to be able to get Jonathan Taylor here in the third round. And I think that that's such a benefit to us in these startup picks, because when we look at the last full season that Jonathan Taylor had, he was the running back one averaging 22 fantasy points per game. And we also know that this is an offense that is going to continue improving. Obviously, Shane Steichen has been a great improvement to this Indianapolis Colts roster. Hell, we saw Zach Moss going crazy this year, and that's not something that any of us had on our bingo cards for 2023, but hell, it happened. So think of what Jonathan Taylor can do with a full season in this offense. Obviously, Anthony Richardson will be coming back, and he is going to help elevate this offense to a new height. And when we look at Jonathan Taylor's age, yeah, he's not as young as Jameer Gibbs or Bijan Robinson, but he's only 25 years old. He should have about two or three seasons left of a full heavy workload where he's going to be able to produce for our fantasy football teams before he probably reaches reaches that NFL age cliff, but that is a lifetime in fantasy football. And when you're looking at these running backs, we probably shouldn't be projecting more than one or two years anyways. So I think the next two years look great for Jonathan Taylor. And that's why he's a good pick here for your fantasy football teams in the third round. Now, moving on to round four, my favorite pick in this round is going to be Brandon Ayuk. He's coming off the board here at the 403. And it feels like Brandon Ayuk had a breakout in 2022. And then in 2023, he went and stepped it up another level. So it's been good things for Brandon Ayuk over the last couple years of his career. And that's exactly what we want to see out of these dynasty wide receivers. Finishing off his 2023 season with 75 receptions, 1300 yards and seven touchdowns, Brandon Ayuk averaged 15.6 fantasy points per game. And there isn't a damn thing about Brandon Ayuk that I don't love. He's a pure route runner. He's just one of those receivers that I fall in love with. I love those route specialists at the NFL level. And that's why I like Brandon Ayuk as well. And when you look at what the 49ers have done with him, they picked up that fifth year option. So he will be back on a definite pay raise here in 2024. But then Brandon Ayuk is going to be a unrestricted free agent here in 2025. And so far up to this point in his career, Brandon Ayuk's career trajectory has reminded me a lot of what we saw out of Stefan Diggs when he was in Minnesota at the early parts of his career. And then you saw once he left that situation in Minnesota, he had that top five potential for your fantasy football teams. And I think Brandon Ayuk has the same stuff, but I just don't think he's going to have to leave San Francisco to reach that potential. We've obviously seen it improving year after year, but this is a guy who, if he does leave or if he stays is going to be great for your fantasy football rosters. Now I talked about earlier in this video, those players that we were talking about, some of them were a little bit more of a value. I don't think this is a value for Brandon Ayuk, but I do think this is a damn good player who is being appropriately valued in these startups. And when we look at the core nucleus for the San Francisco 49ers, you got Brock Purdy, Brandon Ayuk, and then obviously Chris McCaffrey, George Kittle, and Debo Samuel. When we talk about those guys, who are the young players in that batch? It's Brandon Ayuk, it's Brock Purdy. Those are likely the guys that they're going 
going to have to build around as this team continues to age and as they continue to the future of the San Francisco 49ers roster. But I do think that if he leaves, he still has that top five potential like I told you about. But when we look at the 2023 season, Brandon Ayuk was incredibly efficient for your fantasy football teams. And when you look at the stats, Brandon Ayuk was top five in fantasy points per route run, fantasy points per target, and yards per route run. So he's a deep threat. He's winning all over the field, and he's just scoring a bunch of fantasy points every time he touches the football. And that is why I like Brandon Ayuk here in the fourth round. Now, moving on to the fifth round, my favorite player in this round is going to be Zay Flowers. And we're getting him off the board here at the 510. So it does feel like good value for Zay Flowers. But this is a guy who I feel like has a top 12 fantasy football ceiling. And we're being able to draft him right now in startup drafts as the wide receiver 21. And when we look at the future of this Ravens offense, there is going to be some minor transitions here in this wide receiver room. Just over the next two seasons in 2024 and in 2025, Odell Beckham Jr. is going to be a free agent. Nelson Aguilar and Rashad Bateman are going to be free agents. And the one consistent contributor in this wide receiver room should remain Zay Flowers. Now, obviously, there were some things here in 2023 that we didn't necessarily project. Mark Andrews was missing some games here during the season. But even despite that, Zay Flowers established himself as the wide receiver one on this Ravens offense. And I really don't expect that to change moving forward, even if Mark Andrews is in the lineup. And just looking at how Zay Flowers performed against his own teammates, this is a wide receiver who led his wide receiver room in targets, receptions, touchdowns, and receiving yards. So he really did show up in 2023 as a rookie and he balled the hell out and he took control of that entire wide receiver room. So he showed up in 2023 as a rookie and he balled the hell out. And this is a guy who took over that offense as their number one weapon. I just think here at the 510, you're getting a really good player, a player who has a lot of upside, but still has a safe floor. And this is a guy who should be building a little bit more rapport with Lamar Jackson as this offense continues to mature around the young guys. And anytime we can get a centerpiece to an offense, somebody who's the wide receiver one on their team is guaranteed a lot of targets, a lot of receptions. If you can get that in the late fifth, that's worth its weight in gold. And those are players that I'm going to be targeting in my startups. And that's why I think that Zay Flowers is the best pick here in the fifth round. Now, moving on to the sixth round, we're going to be going to the 605. I think the best player in this round is going to be Stefan Diggs. And I hear it. I hear it, guys. He left a very sour taste in our mouths, especially if you had him and you were relying on him in these fantasy football playoffs because he had a horrible stretch to end the season here in 2023. But I think the market has overcorrected. I think we are way too low on Stefan Diggs right now. And I think what most people don't realize is despite the bad stretch that he put together for us at the end of the season, this is a guy who still finished 13th overall in fantasy points per game. And he saw 160 targets on the Buffalo Bills offense. And like I said, I think the market has overcorrected on Stefan Diggs just a little bit too much. Obviously, there's a couple of things that play into it. The bad stretch, the fact that he's turned 30 years old. But when we look at the startup value and you see him being pushed down into that sixth round and coming off of the board as wide receiver 24, I just feel like it's way too low for a player that we've seen be this good for this long. And again, at this price, this is a player who I think the risk is already baked into the pick. Even if Stefan Diggs goes out and he has a massive regression, going from wide receiver 13 in fantasy points per game, say he goes down to wide receiver 24 four in fantasy points per game. That is where you drafted him at. The risk is already baked into this pick. And the fact that you're getting him here as wide receiver 24 in a startup means that you're likely going to be able to add a strong foundation before you have to pick Stefan Diggs. You're going to be able to add a Jamar Chase, a Zay Flowers, guys like that that I've already talked about today. And then you're going to be adding a guy like Stefan Diggs as your wide receiver three. It just feels like that is a money pick and a pick that can help you win a championship in your dynasty fantasy football leagues. So ultimately, you're going to be making that decision for yourselves. You're going to have to decide whether the bad stretch was a fluke or not, but I do think you're likely getting a wide receiver one at a discounted price. And keep in mind too that Stefan Diggs has the type of game that's going to age very well in the NFL. And what if I told you back in 2022 that Keenan Allen, when he turned 30 years old, he still had two top 12 finishes left in the tank at least. We don't, that doesn't even account for what he could do next year. But what if I told you that? Would you still be buying into Keenan Allen? My guess is probably yes. And I think that's the similar bet that you're making with Stefan Diggs. So right now it just feels like the risk is baked into the pick. This is a player with a ton of upside. And as the wide receiver 24 in your fantasy drafts, I feel like there's many other picks that you could make that would be worse than this one. And I'd even go on record here saying that I feel like Stefan Diggs is probably one of the best values in Dynasty Fantasy Football right now, whether that be in the trade room or startups. But obviously we're talking startups here today. So this is where I would be drafting Stefan Diggs. And that's why I think he's the best pick in this round. 
And moving on to my round seven, and we'll stop at round seven because I've been yapping a long time, but it is going to be Kirk Cousins. I think he is the best pick in this round, and I understand. You guys see the jerseys in the back, and you say, yeah, okay, man. Why is Kirk Cousins the best pick in the seventh round? And I'll be honest, a lot of the picks in this round are just gross to me. I don't I don't really like a lot of the picks here, so it may be a little bit default. I considered Tajay Spears, but coming off the board at 709, it felt like that was just a good value for a player like Kirk Cousins. And when you look at what Kirk Cousins has put together over the last couple years of his career, since 2020, Kirk Cousins has been top 12 in fantasy points per game every single season. And the quarterback position, especially in these super flex leagues, is a very valuable position. And finding a guy that can give you top 12 fantasy points per game numbers, and you're drafting him is the quarterback 20. It just feels like too good of a value to pass up. And that's ultimately why I'm leaning Kirk Cousins here. Now, I think if you're one of those teams that in the startup, you end up punting that quarterback two super flex position a little bit far because you want to go grab a couple really good wide receivers or an elite tight end or something like that. Kirk Cousins is a guy that you can plug and play as a high end quarterback two, maybe even a low end quarterback one here on your fantasy football rosters and a guy who's not flashy, but he's a guy who's going to give you the numbers that you need to be a competitive roster. And now I know some of the negatives about Kirk Cousins is he's 35 years Years old. He's in a contract year, even though I do think that he's going to re-sign with Minnesota. And obviously he's coming off of an Achilles tear that he suffered in 2023 that forced him to miss the remainder of the season. But even despite the age, this is a guy who still could have three to five more good years of fantasy football left in him. And if that's the case, that is a long time for your dynasty fantasy football rosters. Additionally, if he does decide to leave the Minnesota Vikings, there are going to be landing spots like the Atlanta Falcons, Denver, Pittsburgh, teams like that, that could use the services of Kirk Cousins that don't have a high draft pick in the NFL draft. And they could be situations where Kirk Cousins could still flourish as well because he was flourishing in Washington before he came over to the Minnesota Vikings. And even if he does go over to one of those situations and he takes a little bit of a regression, again, you're going to get high-end quarterback two numbers out of Kirk Cousins, but you're drafting him as a low-end quarterback two. And again, the last of the worries being the Achilles, I just don't feel like it's as big of a worry for a quarterback like Kirk Cousins. It's not like this is a quarterback who is using his legs on every play. He wasn't running for a lot of rushing yards. He's been pretty much a pocket quarterback his entire career. Career. And I don't expect that to change. So I don't think the Achilles is going to affect Kirk Cousins as much as it would a guy like Lamar Jackson or a guy like Justin Fields. But overall, this is a player that you are going to be getting a discount on at the quarterback position, which is likely the most important position for your super flex dynasty fantasy football leagues. And I'll be taking that all day long when I can get a value like this at that position. Now, like I said, I was going to stop at seven. We have been yapping for a long time. So if you guys want a part two of this, you want to hear us go from rounds eight to 14, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. I'll give you guys some more of my favorite picks here in the startup drafts. And again, if you guys want to check out some of my own personal content, go over to the League FFB. That is at the League FFB over on YouTube. I'm making Dynasty content three to five times a week. So make sure you go check that out. And if you guys want to continue watching this Dynasty content from BDGE, make sure you are subscribed over to that BDGE Dynasty channel because after this month, we are no longer posting on the main channel. So make sure you go follow the Dynasty channel. And with all that being said, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, do all the YouTube shit. But at the end of the day, I'll see y'all on the next one.